and we're getting to respiratory insufficiency okay so respiratory insufficiency insufficiency or failure okay and there are more ways how you can divide the respiratory insufficiency i'll tell you the most used two types of division of this one is like laboratory division or you could say astrop division or blood glasses division and the other one is from the time perspective okay so first one if we want to do the lab division which is very good for you you divide the respiratory insufficiency into two parts one is type one and the other is type two or it has many synonyms. This one is partial, partial. And this one is global is insufficiency. Or another synonym, which you should remember is hypoxemic. So it's hypoxemic insufficiency. Hypoxemic respiratory insufficiency, okay? and. Over here, you care only about the partial pressure of oxygen. So the partial pressure of oxygen, arterial, of course, it's decreased. And what? Plus CO2, partial pressure of oxygen, PA, CO2, is normal or even decreased because the person is hyperventilating. Okay? So watch out. This can happen, for example, at the beginning of the asthmatic attack, when you're starting to be hypoxemic, but you're still able to hyperventilate. So you're gonna breathe out CO2, but you're gonna have hypoxemia, okay? So this is typical, for example, during asthmatic attack. But of course, as you will get more tired, as the, again, diaphragm, and other muscles, the, let's say, helper muscles, the associated muscles will get tired, fatigue. You're going to start hypoventilate. So then it turns into, if, it, if the attack uh, like continues and continues, you're going to have then the global one, which we're going to talk in a sec. That the CO2 will go up and you're going to have respiratory acidosis. But in this case, over here, you can have a normal or you can even have a respiratory alkalosis. Okay. And by the way, typically... If there, is, if there is a problem with lungs, but let's say with diffusion or, I mean, if the initial problem is not like right away hypoventilation, that means that there would be something with regulation of the lungs, you know, you could be on, on opiates or whatever. So if the ventilation is okay, but there's something with diffusion, for example, typically, like, I mean, in pneumonia or whatever, typically... The diseases start with type 1, respiratory insufficiency, and as the lungs get tired, as the disease progresses, you turn into type 2, okay? So there is this evolution of the problem. It has to do something also with that, that remember diffusion of oxygen is much worse than CO2. CO2 can escape very easily. And it's the same with ARDS, what we're going to talk about soon. When it starts, whether you're having type 1 problem, and later as it progresses, which typically does, it turns into global respiratory insufficiency. Okay? Yeah? So, and what's the global one? Well, obviously, I told you already. So, it's a combination. You call it hypoxemic plus hypoxemic hypercapnic. So, over here you have respiratory acidosis. So you have decreased partial pressure of O2 plus increased partial pressure of CO2. So respiratory alkalosis here could be, could be normal. You don't have to have respiratory. But the, the only important thing is the decreased partial pressure of O2. That's obvious. That's the main thing. Once the PaO2 is combined with increased CO2, you're having global respiratory insufficiency or type 2, okay? So this is the, let's say, lab or astrip division or whatever you want to call it. And then we have a, we could talk about the, the time perspective. 
And of course, over here, it means how fast it happens. So you have acute respiratory insufficiency, or you have chronic. And here's a comment. The acute, it's not like with heart, like I mean acute MI, like immediately in, in first tens of minutes or hours. Acute for lungs means days, means like till a week, okay? And this is exactly the acute respiratory distance tri syndrome we're going to talk about. It's not happening. It can happen like very soon, like in a few hours, but typically it takes a few days to, you know, fu fully develop, okay? So with lungs, uh, uh, these acute and chronic terms, they're like uh, in a different range, uh, range. It's more like days. It's developing. It's getting worse and worse as the pneumonia gets worse and worse. But if the insufficiency, if the distress happens within few first days, you call it acute problem. Okay? Yeah? So, and what would you put here? Well, you can have something very instant. Like, what be the acute respiratory insufficiency? What's the disease? Well, it's the asthmatic attack, of course. So something can happen really fast, like asthmatic attack. Okay. Or over here, definitely put ARDS, but over here, think of two, three, four days. Okay. You have initial pneumonia, for example, and then if it worsens, you're having ARDS in a few days. Okay. In contrast to this, chronics mean like really like months so over here, what you're going to put, definitely COPD, of course. Chronic bronchitis, emphysema, that takes years. Okay? So all the, and all the restrictive diseases, of course. Okay? So if there is some fibrotization going on in the lungs, it takes months, years. Okay? So acute and chronic. That's another way how to divide that. Fine. Questions on this part. So, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.